Hello everyone, uh, I'm Michael Jacobs and I'd like to welcome you to uh, a little discussion on Gamma. As some of you might know, my book Science of the Golf Swing, which uh, I have to thank everybody for the support of buying my products and sharing the information. Uh, it's been tremendous, uh, way exceeded uh, anything that I had hoped to date. So it's pretty complicated, as we know. I mean, it's describing the physics of the golf swing. Uh, it's about as simple of a version of the explanation as could be. I, I think when you look at Dr. Nesbitt's research papers, they're written more for the academic world. And I did my best, uh, along with my good friend Matthew Rudy, to write this as uh, digestible as possible. There's a lot of intimidating images in there and some intimidating words, but it really covers everything that you need to know of the movement of the golf club, uh, exactly what the club is experiencing, uh, minus work and power, which is, which is coming up next. So what I thought would be a great idea would be to put together a little collection of essays to cover some of the topics that are in Science of the Swing, and then give some practical examples of how to use it or how to see it. So let's start with that, and our first attempt is going to be with Gamma. So I have a golf club here, and uh, as you know, we're interested in the mass center of the club, so we would find the balance point of the club, and then somewhere just off the balance point would be the actual mass center, uh, and that could be the, pl the point where uh, all the mass is considered as concentrated on, on the object. So it's going to depend a lot on the shape of the head and how much mass is in the head because that's what's going to bring the overall center of the mass of the club away from the shaft. So that's important too. So what do I mean by gamma? Well, as you probably saw in the book, uh, we embed a little coordinate system on the club and things are transformed to that coordinate system so we could get the true experience of the interaction between the golfer and the club, which is ultimately what we're reporting. So we placed this into the center of mass of the club, and the point of interest for our discussion today is this green one. So if we were talking about Alpha Man, which we will get to, the full body model, and let's say we picked the golfers overall center of mass somewhere in there we would put that same coordinate system on the golfers uh, overall center of mass or we could choose any segment of the body that mass center and then put the same exact coordinate on there so if you look at the full body the green is positioned along the entire segment so gamma is gamma rotation gamma torque are things that are involved in the twisting around that green line. So it's, it's really um, best to see um, in a couple of examples I gave in the essay. I gave a couple crude examples with the shish kebab and uh, the rotisserie chicken. And I've, I've often used the rotisserie chicken idea a lot when uh, I'm giving golf lessons. So... If you ever walked into like a rotisserie chicken place, the chicken is just revolving around the, the metal pole that went through it. And that's pretty much what we're talking about when it comes to gamma in golf. So rotation, gamma rotation, is during the course of motion, this golf club is rotating and translating. And we're looking, when we talk about gamma, the specific rotation of the club around itself. And just by watching me twist gamma-wise, you should notice two things. Number one, it's very easy for me to do. It doesn't require much torque or twisting action for me to get a response. And also, what you should notice is that it's going to have quite a tremendous effect on face squaring. So, why is it so easy for me to twist? This particular torque that I apply, gamma torque, when it involves the twisting and rotation of my forearms and wrists and hands to twist the club about itself. Uh, the reason this has the lowest resistance is because of 
the distance from the mass center. So the mass center, the overall mass center of the club, we know is a little bit off the shaft because of the club head. So that point is very close to the shaft. So that makes the resistance to actual torquing very small. So gamma torque magnitudes during a golf swing are in the category of one or two or three Newton meters, uh, up to five or six we've seen. So basically what uh, the best everyday example for you to understand what one to six Newton meters is, is if we took, let's say, a little sleeve of golf balls, so three golf balls and a sleeve, and we put it on the mass center. And let's say this is obviously a short club. Normal length club is pretty close to a meter. So that's it's the effort that it would take to turn three golf balls, a sleeve of golf balls. That would be sometimes more than enough for gamma. So the amount of torque is small, but the implications of the rotation are, are pretty significant. So the reason that it's so small resistance-wise, why people have so much trouble in face control, especially when you have a classic slicer. It's so easy for them to over-rotate the club gamma-wise and open the club way too much that by the time they come into impact, they've, they've sliced. So let's dig deeper. And what we're going to take a look at are some alpha band images and some images within my software program. And what we're going to take a look at is the gamma rotation, some samples, and gamma torque. What's happening in a swing, when it's happening, and it should give you a good start at tackling science of the golf swing. So now we're going to have some fun and we're going to look at Alpha Man. And this is a tour player hitting a shot and you're going to see each body segment has its alpha, beta, gammas. But what I want you to focus on is the mass center of the club out at a distance from his hands. You can see there's the red alpha axes, the blue beta axes, and the green gamma axes that's moving around. So here you could see just how much the club starts to move around. And this is basically what we show when the airplane is, is moving around. So uh, the airplane is a really good analogy and thing to use. So I want you to watch how the gamma... Uh, even you can watch the alpha and the beta, how they start to come around. And now what I'm going to do is you're going to start to see it uh, develop like a little bit of an animation here. So you could see the rotation of each of those alpha, beta, gammas. And obviously we're most interested in the gamma for this discussion. So let's see if we zoom in a bit. what we see so doing this in a little different screen than I usually would so there you could see the rotation of your alpha beta and gamma is going through the hitting area and contrary to popular belief the beta axes as you can see right here would be pointing like I've said on, on postmodern golf many times this would be pointing straight at the video camera. So here you could see how the axes are moving around. So, um, and then um, after the collision, things, things change a bit. But this is a really good vantage point to see the movement of alpha, beta, gammas and how the club is rotating. So now let's take a look at some gamma angles and some gamma torque. Should be a blast. Well, since we've talked so much about food in this gamma essay, especially with the shish kebab and the rotating chicken, um, let's get to the meat and potatoes of the kinematics and kinetics of gamma. So here you can see here's the time in the downswing up until uh, the impact area. And here's the actual gamma swing angle. So at near around the top of the swing, which we define as the highest point of the handle, he has a, this golfer had a gamma swing angle pretty close to 95 degrees up around near the top. So that means that the club rotated, the golfer rotated the club about itself, right? That would be 90, just a couple of more degrees. 
And then you can see early on in that downswing, it, it doesn't change all that much. It's not until almost point 0.1 or a little after point 0.1 where the angle really starts to close. So point one is, uh, it's not in the screen here, you can't see it, I had to zoom in. So point one is gonna be somewhere up around here when the hands are in that position and the shaft is up there. That's gonna be the area where uh, we could expect to see that gamma torque uh, start to ramp up. And if you look at the torque area, you could see that right around point one five, he started torquing it. And then the torque peaks in and around um, a little after 0.1. And then after the peak, you'll notice that he starts to reverse the torque so that it becomes negative at impact. And this is very common. It's very common that we see a golfer up around the top of the swing, early stages of the downswing, not really change gamma swing angle all that much, ramp up the positive gamma torque, the closing torque of the shaft, and then down around near impact, they start to slow that down and reverse it a little. And it's very common to have uh, a Newton meter, a couple of Newton meters of reversal torque. So you could see that the magnitude of torque is very low. I mean, I'm zoomed in here so you could see this. And the alpha and the beta torques, you could see they're way in different directions, much more torques in, in those directions. Uh, so if we continued on the gamma angle to point impact, you could see how rapidly uh, he starts to close that angle. And I think you saw that in that avatar. Sure.